Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Okay, welcome back to uh, Fusion Mobile e-learning uh, uh, center, uh, solution center as I love to speak. And I remain my own with of your biology tutor, I'm Oshito Gunwalajide, also known as Smoking Brain. And together we would uh, be traveling as we have been doing thus far. And we'll be looking under biology, we'll be looking at microorganisms and better health. Now, you and I know that there are some microorganisms that are harmful and there are some uh, that are beneficial. And there are some that are uh, beneficial, as I've said earlier. So looking at this now, for you to get uh, better health despite uh, the invasion of these microorganisms, uh, there have to be a control measure that will be put in place. So the outlines we're going to be looking at will be control of harmful microorganisms, uh, the control of vectors, which happens to be the carrier of these microorganisms, and the maintenance of good public health. What are those agents that are responsible for making sure that there is good public health. Are you with me? So we'll be looking at all this here. Uh, now follow me closely, let's go. Control of harmful microorganisms. Uh, how do you, you, how do you control microorganisms? Do you know you can do it? Now how do you do this? Number one is high temperature. Now microorganisms, there are some microorganisms that do not grow at a particular high temperature. There is a temperature range for them. Now when you go, when uh, you improvise and you make the temperature to be greater than their normal temperature, they get inactivated and they get destroyed. So high temperature destroys uh, microorganisms. Food preservation. Food preservation. Now, the way and manner you preserve your food uh, will determine if you will inactivate uh, the microorganisms, if you will destroy the microorganisms, or if you will actually help their growth. Now, one of the food preservation that works uh, uh, better is what we call salting. Salting, the addition of salt to your food. Now, adding salt to your food helps to inactivate this microorganism. It helps to inhibit their growth, thus destroying them. Now, what we call sterilization by boiling. Sterilization by boiling any of your equipment, any of your apparatus, uh, when you boil them, it destroys microorganisms that are attached to it. Uh, uses of antiseptic. Now, antiseptic are chemicals that help to inhibit the growth of organisms such as bacteria. Antiseptic. And so to speak, there are also soaps, uh, domestic soaps that are antiseptic in nature. Now, coming now, what we call the quarantine service. Now, at that particular time, when the Having to be a breakout in the Ebola. Uh, now, some uh, patients or victims, as the case may be, that were found, uh, that were actually rumored to be infected uh, with Ebola. What uh, they actually did then, the uh, hospital body, what they did then was to just uh, get them and uh, put them in a particular room and lock the room. So that's what we call quarantine. Those people that you feel they might have a particular disease, uh, you get them and you put them in a place to monitor them before you allow them to mix with other people. So quarantine services can also be used. Uh, the use of disinfectant as well will work. Disinfectant can also be used and uh, many other control measures. So basically now we'll be looking at the control of vectors. Okay, now we're looking at the second outline, which is the control of vectors. I said earlier that vectors are animals that carry microorganisms. I mean, these microorganisms have the ability to cause disease. Uh, now, how do we control these vectors? Number one is drainage of swamps. Now, swamps talks about those moist areas around your vicinity. Those areas happen to be breeding ground for microorganisms. Are you doing? So when you drain those areas, you take away the water that is present in that area. That area becomes in uninhabitable for organisms to grow. Are you with me? Mosquitoes will not be able to breed in such areas. Now number two, we spray oil on water. Now this is a cup of water. It has got water in it. Are you with me? Now when you spray oil on it, what will happen? Now naturally water has a, a, a how do I say water has an elastic layer at the top. That elastic layer is uh, very very essential i mean the elastic area is what we call the surface tension the surface tension 
it is there now one thing you need to do is well when you add oil to the surface water it breaks the surface tension because usually organisms at their lava stage there's something called metamorphosis how organisms move from uh, lava pupa imago and down to adults so organisms at their lava stage when you add oil to it it will destroy the surface tension so they will not be able to have uh, a conducive environment to go to grow rather so that way you are actually destroying or in a or in a beating or inhibiting their growth. And now coming down here, what we call uh, the use of insect repellent. Many people these days they make use of uh, mosquito net and all that. Some they look for a particular cream to rub on their body so as to ward off insect attack. Covering of food. Now covering of food, uh, it's our number one basic food hygiene. Uh, you've been taught this right from your primary school and the truth is this, it still works. Now lastly, we have use of drugs. Uh, drugs such as uh, chloroquine. Chloroquine can also be used uh, to attack all these vectors. Are you doing? So now we quickly move uh, on to maintenance of good public health. Okay, so lastly, we'll be looking at the maintenance of good public health. Now, how do you maintain good public health? Uh, the following are the various uh, tips on how to maintain good public health. Number one is refuse disposal. Uh, the way and manner you dispose your refuse uh, matters a lot. Uh, the way and manner you dispose your refuse, uh, we either tell if you are supporting the growth of microorganisms or if you are against the growth of microorganisms. Now, proper refuse disposal uh, is actually what expected of you. You dispose your refuse properly, make sure there are no litters all around your vicinity. Any, any uh, uh, waste you tend to see, you pick them and you drop them in your bin and your bin should be placed in a strategic areas where anyone could see and so that it will be easy to assess it now the next one is protection of water uh, water should be protected at all times uh, the water source should be covered uh, there are some areas uh, that get their water from only a particular source the water is from a particular source and uh, the danger in it is that uh, if there's an outbreak of disease it gets to affect many people because the water is from a particular source so that means that uh, there is a greater need for that water to be protected Beside those areas uh, uh, towns and villages where the water are actually getting from a particular source or pipe bone water so even water supply should be treated from underground contaminants so water should be protected to prevent outbreak of cholera or any other type of disease associated with it. Protection of food, your food should be protected. Where your foods are stored should be protected. Your food should be covered at all times. And lastly, we have got health organizations. Now health organizations are bodies uh, that are concerned uh, with the public health of a particular nation. Health organizations. Now we have notable ones uh, in the world as well as uh, in Nigeria. Now we have WHO. WHO is known uh, as World Health Organization, uh, a very standard body, a very respectable body, and a very reputable body. Now this body public uh, journals, uh, I think uh, weekly, uh, they help us, they help to inform us about epidemics. Uh, epidemics happens to be outbreak of a particular disease. So they tell us what is and what is not. And to countries that are affected with particular disease, they send AIDS to them, they send expatriate to them, so as to help them curb the spread of disease. Now what UNICEF, uh, UNICEF is United uh, uh, Nation Children Education uh, Fund. These also help uh, to combat diseases. They help in training children. Are you with me? They help in giving them informative knowledge that would help them become a better person so as to make the environment a conducive place. We also have the International Red Cross Society. These ones are always on stand against any emergency and they help better. We have NMA on the local level. NMA is Nigeria America Association Association. These are actually bots uh, that meet uh, periodically to talk on how they can make this country a well-developed uh, nation. And now, can we take a look at the highlights uh, of the outlines again? Uh, number one, we have the control of harmful microorganisms. Number two, we have control of vectors. And lastly, we have maintenance of good public health. Now, as usual, a question will pop up on your screen. Uh, try as much as possible to attend them. And it is always advisable for you to go through the video again uh, so as to update uh, your knowledge. Uh, remember this.